Hello. There is some sort of unwritten law, I think, that if you sit down to record a video, then you happen to live on a boat which is in a marina, then at the moment you press record, someone elsewhere in the marina will start working on their boat. And indeed, that is what's happened. So if in the background, as I'm talking, you can hear the high-pitched whine of some sort of sanding implement or something, I'm afraid that is because the person on the boat, two boats over, is working on theirs. And there's nothing I can do about it. I could wait, obviously, but who knows how long they're going to be. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. The noise in the background is an inevitability of where I am filming. Now, why am I filming? That's a very good question. I'm filming because I've bought this. I'm a total sucker for new cameras and camcorders. And this is the Sony ZV-1. And I saw it and I thought, I quite fancy one of those. Now, I know there are a lot of reviews of this already on the internet. Sony were apparently flinging these around like confetti on launch day to all the big name tech vloggers and they all came out with their reviews on the same day. Well, I was not so fortunate. I had to actually spend my own cold hard cash on this, but the upside is I can say whatever the heck I want to about it. For a bit of context, I went on holiday at the beginning of the year and I wished I'd had something like this, which is what's prompted me to buy it, because I wanted to make a video blog of the holiday, but the camera I normally film on is, is this. It's the Sony AX53 camcorder. I'm a camcorder person. I'm not really a, a mirrorless or DSLR person. Just my background is in this kind of thing, so that's what I'm used to. But it's quite big, isn't it? Even for a compact camcorder, it's not something you necessarily want to lug about with you as you're going on treks or whatever. I also didn't want to leave it in the camper van. It was a camper van holiday. Um, so I didn't want to leave it unattended in case it got nicked, but I didn't want to take it with me all, all over the place. What I really would have liked is something this size. But all the little cameras like the Canon GX... Is it the GX7? All those. They all seem to have some sort of flaws. And so I'd never bought one because all the vloggers said, well, they're good for this and not good for that. Anyway... So finally, this has come out. Sony has taken what looks like a stills camera, but actually it's a video camera that looks like a compact stills camera. I think it's largely in the body of the RX100, but they have optimised it for video. And obviously, it's quite compact. I mean, it's not tiny, but it's compact enough that you can put it in a pocket. So as a travel vlogging camcorder this is exactly what I could have done with on my holiday I ended up shooting on my old iPhone SE it was not good it was compact but the footage wasn't good and the sound was terrible I wish I'd had this because the images are good it's nice and small uh, it, it's designed for vlogging they, they pitch it as a vlogger's camcorder and they've done a pretty good job, I have to say. There are flaws, but it's not too bad. Right, mention the size. It's nice and compact. It's got the flip-out screen. You open that, it turns the camera on, pops out the zoom lens. The screen obviously flips round, so you can do the whole vloggy selfie thing. But also, you can use it just as a nice, sharp monitor on which to shoot your various vistas of wherever you are if you're going on holiday. Being a compact stills camera, it is not the most most ergonomic thing in the world. This is partly why I like camcorders. Ergonomics. They've got everything built in. Zoom lens, all the controls fall to hand. On these, it's all tiny little buttons and, and awkwardness. So, effectively, you put this thing in auto and let it do its thing. And the auto these days, on most of these camcorders, is so good that, by and large, 99% of the time, it will do a really good job and I tell you what I particularly noticed again this is coming from a camcorder background now I can't remember exactly how big the sensor is in this thing but it's pretty small compared to a mirrorless this I think is a one inch sensor and the difference that makes in slightly dim conditions not so much for the for the filming of the dim conditions but for the autofocus is remarkable for example I'm currently filming this on the prior version of this the AX33 that has face recognition, and it's just about managing to pick me up in this environment. As you can see, I've got a window behind, I've got a window over there. It's not dark, it's not super light, but the camcorder is just picking up my face. This one, the newer version, does a slightly better job, but numerous times I've filmed in here, I'm in a narrowboat, and there are windows along it, but it's not super light, and sometimes this struggles. This little marvel 
not only easily picks out my face anywhere in the boat, but it's got the eye detection, and it locks onto my eye, even through my very, very um, thick glasses, and even in the semi-darkness of the boat. I'm so impressed with the autofocus on this thing. Um, I'd say it, eye, eye tracking. How, do, how is that even possible? How does that work? I don't know, but it does. And I went out in my camper van recently, met up with a friend in her camper van, and it got to night time. We had a bucket with a fire in it, and that was pretty much the only illumination, a few other lights here and there. And I pointed this up at her, and again, it managed to lock onto her eye in the semi-pitch black with only a small campfire to light us. I, truly, I was staggered. I mean, I'd be amazed if it had got face focus, but it went one better and it got eye focus. Truly a thing of wonder. The only um, slight snag I've found with the... Um, uh, it's not really a snag on the autofocus of this, is... It's, it's got the ability, this, to do a slight shallow depth of field, reasonably large sense, a nice wide lens, and if you get sufficient distance between the foreground and background items, you will get background defocus. So I was taking some film the other day on that camper van trip of a river, and I thought, I mean, it was stupid, really, I just assumed that the river would be in focus. And in fact, what it did was it focused on the nearby grasses, and the river was blurry. I'd have preferred it the other way round. The river in focus and the uh, uh, grasses blurry. But never mind, you know, just those are little things you come to learn about as you um, get used to um, using the camcorder. Now, I haven't done extensive testing in low light, and I would never expect a camcorder to be, especially, I mean, OK, it's a one-inch sensor, but, it, you know, it can't work miracles. I'd never expect it to be brilliant. But dim light, by which I mean indoors... I think this does a really good job. Again, especially coming from a camcorder background where these things are notoriously bad at doing any sort of indoor filming. This one is very, very good. You'll notice the little microphone on top and it comes with this little fluffy wind jammer thing that has a, a mount so it just goes into the cold shoe attachment. You can put an external mic on there if you want and there is a mic jack on the, uh, the unit. But if you want to travel at its smallest, then you just put the wind jammer on and film like that. Sound quality off that is... it's all right. I mean, you've got to be near enough to it, like any microphone, be close to it to get a good strong signal and not loads of background sound. But I was, again, pleasantly surprised at how well this did on this camping trip. I did some pieces where I was, hello, blah, 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 camping, and then I would go off and do something else, and uh, my friend Lorna would film me. And even then, it managed to pick up what I was saying pretty well. In fact, I'll, I'll play in a sample of that right now. Well, I've added a kettle full and a saucepan full of boiling water to my bucket of very cold. Hopefully that will be sufficient. Wish me luck. I'm going in. We have some metal pins and some rope. That's it. Right. So I think it does pretty well. You can, as I say, just pull that out and put in an external... Um, oh, there's the mic. Um, the external microphone, like a Rode Video Micro, which is the one I'm recording this review on. And that would just slot in the thing and go into the um, socket, which is there on the side. Now, very disappointingly, it doesn't have a headphone jack. And although you may not want headphones on while you're recording yourself, for playing shots back you really do want to be able to hear them. And the loudspeaker on this thing is rubbish. It's, you may not even be able to see it, three tiny little dots on the bottom is the loudspeaker. And it's so quiet that unless you're in an absolutely silent room, you can barely hear what's coming out of this. And if you are outside and you want to play a shot back, you maybe you've just done a lovely piece to camera, you want to play it back, check it was all right, you pretty much have to stick this thing in your ear to hear the sound. Um, and it shouldn't be like that. I've got a DJ Osmo action here. This thing's really loud. In fact, I'll give you a demo. I'll give you a demo. Let me switch this on. I've set the recording level on this microphone to a fixed level, so this won't change between um, samples. So let me find a piece. There we go. I'm doing a piece to camera. So from the Osmo, I'll hold it about here, so it's about four inches away from the microphone, and have a listen to this. Final epic. 
episode of season two of Cruising the Cut, but fear not, there will be a season three and a season four as well, for that matter. In this ep- right, that's nice and loud. Now let's play something back off this, and I will hold it at roughly the same distance. So there's the loudspeaker, so we'll hold it there and we'll click play. It is really noticeably quiet and hard to get any sense of whether what you recorded was recorded properly. So a headphone jack would have been really useful. Um, hopefully, perhaps they'll do a version two of this with a headphone jack. It, you just sometimes you want the confidence to play your stuff back and check that it did actually record OK. Um, other than that, say sound quality, uh, not too bad. Ergonomics I talked about earlier in terms of, you know, I prefer camcorders, but all things considered, this isn't too bad because, in part, there are assignable buttons all over this that you can reassign what functions they have, as well as there's a certain amount of things you can do on the touch screen. For example, you can touch and it will focus on whatever you've pointed out on the screen. But also there's a button here called C1. You can assign various functions to that. There's another one here with a picture of a dustbin on it that's called C2. That's assignable. You can assign a function to the button in the middle of the control dial, and you can also reassign left press on the control dial and right press on the control dial. So that's, uh, well, that's five immediately accessible functions. Plus, there is a function button here, and it brings up an entire little menu, and you can determine what goes on that menu, so you can put your favourite things on the function menu. And there's also a menu button here, which you can set to bring up your own uh, preferred menu options as the first option. So in terms of getting to things you want to change, it's very good. And in terms of accessibility to things you want to change on the fly with the buttons, it's very good. So I've got the white balance settings on one of these. I've got the ND filter set to one of these. Um, and you can pretty much, as far as I can tell, assign any function to do any of these buttons. So configurability is great, even if the actual buttons are a bit fiddly and small, you can certainly set it up so that if you need to get to things quickly, you can do so. The menus themselves, I've heard a lot of people moan about the Sony menus, there are a lot of them. It's about six different pages of different things, and each page has up to about nine further sub pages. I don't know, maybe I'm just a nerd, but I quite like going through menus. I sit there happily going, oh, what does that do? And then look at the next one. What does that do? What does that do when I get a new camera? And just work my way through all the menus. And half the stuff you never need to touch. The other stuff you might touch occasionally. And then some things you just set up once when you first buy the camera and never touch again. So it, I don't think you need to be off-put by the menu. Just set aside an hour to go through it and work out what you need to do. Now, the on-off button for the camera, rather awkwardly, is, is kind of tucked behind the wind jammer, but it will turn on and off if you simply flip out the screen. So you don't have to use the on-off button uh, if you don't want to. There's a mode button right next to it that determines what shooting mode you're in, and that can be stills, because it does do stills, as well as various video modes such as completely auto everything or you can have it in I think I've got it set in programmed auto where it does exposure using the um, lens f-stop and the um, gain and um, I don't think it does the auto ND filter I think I've got that on manual anyway it's basically taking care of exposure and, and focus and then other things are settable with the buttons, like the white balance, to whatever I want them. But there's, there's all sorts of different modes you can set, depending on whether you want the camera to do everything or you'd rather do stuff yourself. You've got a little zoom rocker here. And, oh by golly, that zoom is loud. It's not something you'll be able to use while you are shooting, because as soon as you touch that, it's going... Vroot! Vroot! Which this is picking up very loudly. So that's more of a use it to compose your shots kind of thing. Nice big red record button there to start it recording. That's very easy. And then you've got that programmable button there, as I say. 
you've got the microphone in there you've also got um ooh, a little now is that micro usb or mini usb i forget i think it's micro usb isn't it for charging and then under that one that i think is um hdmi for output somewhere else on the bottom you've got the little battery and there's the sd card slot the battery is tiny i mean look at that thing so an npbx1 but I actually found it all right when I went on my camper van trip. I got to the site at around midday and did a fair bit of filming in the afternoon. I mean, not continuously, but every time there was something interesting, I picked up the camera and shot. And there was still charge left in it by the time I went to bed. And then I just popped the camera on charge overnight and it was ready for another day's filming. Certainly, I think you'd want to have two or three spare batteries if you wanted to do a full day or anything like that and the other awkwardness of course is that the tripod mount is there which means you can't get in to change the sd card or change the battery without unscrewing the tripod mount it's a, a minor inconvenience but nothing too bad the lens is f1.8 f2.8 so that's quite fast and it's 24 to 70 millimeters which is okay. I mean, again, I'm used to camcorders with 20 times optical zooms on them, so this feels short when I go in for the telephoto, but it's all right for a compact camera. And 24mm, again, for me as a camcorder user, is quite wide. And I know a lot of people have complained and said, oh, this isn't a vlogging camera. It only goes to 24mm. How am I supposed to get me and the vista behind me in shot? Well, here's a crazy notion. If you're trying to talk about the vista behind you, Show the blooming vista and get yourself out of shot. Why do vloggers feel they have to be in every single shot? You don't look... Do that when you want to do a piece to camera, and then when you want to show the lovely rolling hills of Tuscany, point it at the rolling hills of Tuscany, and then the whole 24mm isn't wide enough to get me and the hills of Tuscany in shot is a non-issue. Yeah, 24 to 70 is fine, I think. Stabilisation on this... Probably a good reason the lens doesn't go any further than 70. Stabilisation is... It's a bit old school, really. It's got off, no stabilisation. It's got standard stabilisation. Then it's got active. And, yeah, it takes some of the shake out of the shots. But it's just not on a par with what other devices can do. If I refer back to the Osmo again, this and the GoPro Hero 8 both have the most amazingly smooth stabilization systems i don't know how they do it it's purely electronic the little processors must be working overtime but you can walk with this and i mean properly walk bouncing around as you walk and it's magic it's a magic carpet it's unbelievable the stabilization on this with this Mm, it just about takes some of the jitter out of the shot but you would not want to walk and talk with this now since the technology obviously exists in software to do super, super stabilisation, why don't Sony do it? I mean, it seems theirs is stuck in the past with the same level of stabilisation that they've had on, on cameras going back five, ten years or so. It, it should not be beyond the wit of Sony to have the same level of electronic cleverness that's in a DJI Osmo Action or a GoPro Hero 8, I think. If they could add that kind of stabilization to this it would be amazing so that is basically the camera i'm not going to say much more about it because i think I'm, I'm going on a bit it, but i like it i think is the the ultimate uh, answer it's compact it's got lots of configurability the sound quality is reasonable using the onboard mic and you can plug in an external mic it's portable and uh, yeah it does everything that i would want it to do now i did buy this handle that is designed for it and some other Sony cameras. It was on special offer if you bought the camera at, I think it came in at about half price and it was about 80 quid. Now, to be honest, if the normal price of this is 160 quid, it's no, no way would I pay that. Frankly, 80 is a bit steep and 40 would probably be more reasonable because really this is just like a, a mini tripod with a couple of Bluetooth buttons on it to control the camcorder. So when you're doing the whole vlog thing with it, just screwed in. In fact, I'll 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 do it. You know, might as well just screws in like that, and then you can do your whole vloggy thing and go hi, blah blah blah. So on the back of the handle, you've got a record button, you've got a zoom rocker, you've got a little lock button, so you can stop yourself accidentally pressing the buttons, which is quite good. There is a photo button, 
and there is also a duplicate of the C1 configurable button which is quite handy and then obviously the um, top of this will, will move around slightly so you can um, move the camera one way or t'other and also if you press in it will tilt the whole thing and it locks into various positions it's not fully articulating in the sense you can't put it at any angle you want but you press it move it and then it locks into the next notch but there's quite a few notches and I thought it was worth getting because just having that little remote control as I mentioned it is Bluetooth and it worked quite well um, it, it can be very useful on occasion and having the little tripod to put it on it well I say it's probably not worth 80 quid though and that was a special offer price I certainly wouldn't pay full price for it but it is quite handy to just have the camera on that and be able to press the buttons when you're doing the vlogging um, and you pair it up you put this thing into Bluetooth mode you press and hold that button and that button I think it's a couple of buttons on that for about 10 seconds lights start flashing this sees it as a Bluetooth thing and says do you want to connect you say yes and then it's connected then you turn on Bluetooth control in the camera which you have to do after pairing it if you turn the Bluetooth control on then pair it it seems to turn the Bluetooth control off so turn that on after you've paired them and then as I say you can operate the zoom you can record stop um, so it's a useful addition but I, I, I think the handle is overpriced so um, it was reasonable to get it in in the special offer with the camera right I think that will do for this now. I'll say just some initial impressions after using it a little bit. If you have any questions or any things you would like to see me test, drop a comment below and I will do my best. I'll probably throw some test videos up of various things um, as I do them. But if you have anything specific, just let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see if I can sort that out. So that is that. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.